Alright guys, this is hopefully going to be a somewhat quick tutorial on how to create a static mesh in Blender and export it to UDK using the FPX pipeline. Um, this isn't really a Blender tutorial, so we're going to make things fairly quickly here, and I'm not going to explain much, but we're going to create a simple chair. We're going to go ahead and... Um, do, do, there we go. And delete the vertices there. Select that. Add a modifier. Nope. Ah, oh, boy. This is going well already. Mirror. Mirror, mirror, mirror. There we are. Clipping. Scale along the Z. Then we're going to go ahead and add a loop cut here. Add a loop cut there. Add a loop cut there. Nope, not there yet. Um, now we're going to go ahead and extrude that. And then we're going to go down here and now we're going to add a loop cut. Uh, right about there. And then we're going to extrude those. It's fancy, fancy chair as you can tell. So now that we have our chair, I like to apply the modifier because we're not doing much with it. And now we're going to texture it. Um, first thing we're going to do though is our UV maps. Add a UV map and we're just going to call this diffuse. Add another one and then we're going to call this one as light map. So that we have two UV maps because that's the way UDK likes it. Um, Adds a, adds a nice light map. Alright. Um, first thing we're going to do is go into our UV editing. Excuse me. Make sure our diffuse is on. And then we're going to add new, or no, sorry. We're going to go to image, open image. And we're going to go to game assets. And then we're going to go to textures and um, we're gonna make we make sure we select the PNG and make sure that it's like um, square image, like 512 by 512, or 1024 by 1024. UDK doesn't seem to like it. I don't think if it's not in those formats. So we're gonna hit open, and then we're gonna go ahead and um, unwrap this. So we're gonna do for this one. We're just gonna do Smart UV Project. Hit OK. Then we're going to switch over to textured view and add a point light. Sure. All right. Now, just so it's possible, we're just going to quickly um, turn that off for one and. Take these four, rotate them 90, and scale them way up. We'll get crazy lines in there if we go too high, I guess. So we'll it's not very tiled, guys. Now I had to resize this to 512 by 512, so it's not very tiled anymore. But anyway, we can definitely tell that we rotated it, and that's pretty much all we're going for, just to show that that's possible. So, um, correct in the object mode, and I think we're pretty much all set. We're not going to do anything fancy with the texture for now. Um, now we're going to go ahead and actually tap back into that, then change this from diffuse to light map. And you can see it's not textured anymore, so we have it on a separate UV channel. We're going to do U and we're going to do light map pack. And I always, uh, I think I'll just use the defaults. Alright, and so we have that all selected. And then we're going to go into new. And then just, we're going to call this a light map and just leave the rest default. Hit OK and it's going to turn it black. 
obviously, and and whoops, we actually do not need the black. Um, we just need it unwrapped like that. And let's go ahead and save that right now. I'm just gonna it untitled four. Save the blender file and right so far we have our light map and our diffuse map so make sure both of them pull up differently then we're going to go back to default view and then we're going to go to our texture and um, just our regular material um, and then our texture and then we're going to do type uh, image or movie and then we're going to open and we're going to go and select our PNG 512 by 512 to open and where was the all right then we're gonna do there it is mapping wow coordinates UV and then we're gonna use diffuse and it's gonna be flat so we should be all set there save that and Next, let's go ahead and actually name our little thing here. Let's just call it chair. <coughs> and uh, one thing we need to do before we export it out is add collision. And since I'm lazy, we're just going to go ahead, deselect that in object mode, and add a cube. We're going to scale that down. And we're going to go ahead and, um, oops, GY, scale it up, go into wireframe, And we're just going to compass all of that with one collision model since <clears throat> I don't see much, uh, many people trying to get underneath the chair. So we're just going to do that. Uh, we have to name it this way UCX underscore C H A I R. So UCX chair. And then what we're going to do is duplicate that. And. Let's go ahead and move it along the X. We're going to scale it along the Y. We're going to move it along the Y. Alright, and then we're going to scale it along the Z. So that. Oh, you know what? Let's move. There. That's there. And let's move this along the Y. And that's all set there. This can move a little bit along the Y. Alright. We should be Notice this is UCX chair. Dot zero zero one. So let's go ahead and save that and let's export as an FBX. I have my presets. I just do armature and mesh. We don't have an armature now. And you know what? I'll actually scale it. I have my unit set up where I can scale it in there so it looks good. But we'll just scale it by ten, and then we'll do Untitled Two dot FBX. We're gonna export that and then we're gonna let me open let's go ahead and open UDK. Let me pause for a second while that fully loads. Alright, that's loaded. Let's import <coughs> our on 
title 2.fbx. I just leave most of the same import materials and textures though since you know I have them in Blender. And we're going to hit OK to all and you can use Autodesk um, to update that. If and let's go back there and see what we did wrong. Yes, what we did wrong, I realized after about a second, <laughs> is we need to go back into here under export. I have selected objects. We're going to uncheck that since we have multiple objects. And then we're going to go ahead and re export that. And then re import that and hit OK to all and there it goes so that's one issue you have to watch out for and we're going to use a static mesh editor and there it is that's our very crappily done thing but you will notice that the material is, you can tell we rotated at 90 degrees and all that. Um, and you will notice that if we go to UV channel 0, start, that's a UV channel for that. UV channel 1 is our light mass UV channel. Um, and I'll show you the issues with just doing that smart project. Um, there are ways you can fix that too. I might cover that in another, uh, another tutorial. If we view the collision, we can see that we have those two fancy little collision things, which is nice. So we have collision. And if we exit out of here and go ahead and drag the static mesh itsy bitsy, as you know, because we didn't really. Oh, I did hit scale 10, I thought. Whatever. Uh, that scale thing doesn't seem to work all the time. But um, let's go ahead and throw one on there. And then for gigs, we'll throw two on there and scale it up oops nope and what we're going to do here is I throw that in there so you see that there's those shadows there and all that but we added light mass, so what's her light map? Oh, I'm gonna get those two all. So you'll see what what that does when we let's move it over just a little bit. Um, when we rebuild the lighting, I'm gonna go ahead and actually use light mass. So it's gonna go ahead and now pause while it does that, and you'll get that warning. Um, there is another warning you'll get if you don't have light maps. You'll notice the issue immediately but let's go ahead and play from here oh, app. <laughs> let me fix that a quick second all right have some real issues getting rid of that but so to recreate it but play from here pretty much um, let's just go ahead and say fly and um, you notice here there's obvious issues um, where it doesn't uh, you'll see it bleeds kind of um, and it definitely doesn't look right. This is not a leg casting a shadow on this. Um, and you'll notice, by the way, our collision meshes are working great. You can bump right into them. Um, uh, you can't go, obviously, between the legs, though, because I didn't want to do that. So, um, anyway, um, you'll notice here it just doesn't look good at all. And there's a few ways we can fix that. Um, you, you can uh, re-unwrap them or fix the unwrapping in Blender. Uh, I think that's one of the ways of doing it. And the other way of doing that is in UDK. And I would look at their documentation in detail. I haven't done enough research on it yet. I'll probably do, hopefully do an advanced tutorial later on how to get rid of that bleed effect and that horrible shading effect. But that's essentially what uh, the light map is for, and that saves the engine from rendering it in real time. You can just use, you can just, uh, when you compile the lighting for the level, it'll be, uh, here I'll show you, um, it'll 
pop up all these textures. If you look closely at these uh, 2D textures, you can see kind of a light map that was created right there and baked, uh, essentially, for the level. So it has this lighting information. You can bake light maps for things in Blender as well. But another thing we should probably take a look at is our material. Uh, we have our texture 2D, and that's just the uh, the texture that was imported the picture pretty much 512 by 512, and then our material though is a little bit more interesting. If we do edit using the uh, texture editor, if we hold down Control and move it, click, hold down Control and move it, we can see the texture coordinates. As far as I know, just tell exactly where the UVs are. Um, rotated and flipped and moved and all that so um, and I have yet to figure out uh, I have to look more into this but in Blender you should be able to create like a normal mask and then maybe it's in one of these channels I don't know then you just pop that into the normal um, and you can do a specular and then you have to pop that into the specular and that would add a lot more texture and or a lot more just it'd look a lot differently um, uh, so so that's how you would do that um, and that's going to be it for this tutorial, so if there's any questions, let me know.